I took the day off today, and so I had time to make a quick video. Over the past month or so, we've seen some weakness in the price of gold from its peak late this summer. In fact, the price weakness accelerated quite a bit over the past few days, and as I put together the charts for this video, the gold price is just a little bit north of $1,800 per ounce. I'm sure some of my viewers are worried. Others are probably happy because this gives them a chance to acquire more gold at lower prices. The trolls will probably start swooping in soon and leaving messages about how stupid we are and that gold is going back to $300 per ounce. I'm sure we'll get quite a few of the Bitcoin folks popping in to say, see, I told you Bitcoin is going to replace gold. In short, there will be lots and lots of noise out there to cloud a person's thinking about what the past price moves mean. So let's put it into perspective. I've said in multiple videos that the Treasury views physical Federal Reserve notes printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing to be the senior liens on the gold certificates held by the Fed, and thus, indirectly, the senior claims on custodial Treasury gold. And this gives us the proper fundamental way to evaluate gold relative to the amount of physical currency currently in existence. As we can see, the custodial gold held by the Treasury, when marked to market, it had uh, quite a few big swings. But when viewed in the long term, it has tended to rise as currency is printed into existence. In fact, it has trended around the total currency in circulation divided by 3.82. This 3.82 number represents the level at which Treasury gold collateralizes 26% of the notes outstanding. Those two little red dots at the end of the chart represent the value of Treasury gold weight this summer and the value at today's price. When viewed in this context, the price movement doesn't really look all that significant, does it? Let's put some extremes on this chart to see what the possibilities are going forward in terms of upside and downside. Back in the 1970s and into 1980, we had a significant currency crisis, and gold more than fully collateralized all of the physical notes outstanding. So let's put an upper bound on the chart representing full collateralization. This is the point at which the mark-to-market value of all of the gold in the Treasury is equivalent to the number of physical Federal Reserve notes outstanding. Let's also put a lower bound on here, representing the approximate peak of confidence in the currency. This occurred in the early 2000s, when Treasury gold collateralized only 12.5% of the currency in existence. At present, the gold in the Treasury collateralizes about 22.9% of the notes. The alarmist would say that if the price of gold drops to the lower bound, it could mean sub $1,000 per ounce gold, $980 per ounce to be more precise. This would be the level that represents peak optimism in the U.S. economy and its currency. The gold optimist would take a look at where we stand and say that gold could rise to $7,860 in a new currency crisis. And this is what it would take to fully collateralize all of the notes. And this is probably already a much deeper treatment than most gold analysts will do. I'm always hearing calls for gold to retreat to certain resistance levels without any consideration for how much currency has been debased over the, uh, time from printing. And when I say printing here, I'm not referring to what most people currently think of as printing, which is creation of digital credits that are redeemable in the physical notes. I'm talking about printing of the actual notes by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Because again, this is what the Treasury considers to be the first lien on the gold certificates that it's issued. I think it's a big mistake not to view gold through the lens of what's happening to the currency. But even this treatment here is a little short-sighted. After all, currency in circulation is a moving target. What can we expect to see over the next 10 years? What if the rate of currency printing over the next 10 years matches what the rate has been over the past 50 years? If that were the case, this is what the collateralization channels would look like going forward. If the coming decade manifests in the extreme optimism in the U.S. economy and its currency that we saw back in the early 2000s, then by the year 2030, the price of gold will be roughly where it is today. And this will represent an opportunity in gold that hasn't been seen since the year 2001. If, on the other hand, we see pessimism rear its head and we enter into another currency crisis like what was seen in the 1970s, we could see gold prices move up to a level that would value the Treasury gold stock at over $4 trillion. 
This would result in a gold price that is over $15,000 per ounce, or eight times its current price. Personally, I think it's more likely that we'll see prices closer to the upper channel within the next couple years. That's just a guess on my part, based upon signal processing work. But one might argue that a lot of debt has been created over the past year, and given the financial situation that we find ourselves in, the rate at which currency in circulation grows may increase to allow currency in circulation to catch up to debt issuance. So maybe we'll see something that looks more like this over the next decade. This is really the reason why we hold gold, isn't it? It's not to make a paper profit. Paper profit can be an illusion. The reason we hold gold is because we want a way to store the surplus wealth that we've been able to generate during our working careers, and we don't trust the currency. I hope this helps put things into perspective.